Good morning, everybody. It's Friday, April the 10th, 2020. Want to do first a mention that today's crowdsource is brought to you by Mariana Diaz. And her suggestion for today was to do a Medusa. So I'm going to do that today. A uh, big birthday shout out today for this week. We have Michelle Foley, Jimmy Silva Miranda, Mika Neth, Luke Ravelin, and tomorrow is Severin Scarlett's birthday. So happy birthday, Severin. So today we're going to be using a General Pencil Company Kimberly 4B pencil, uh, my trusty Snoopy pencil sharpener. The high polymer eraser by Pentel and a kneaded eras er uh, eraser by General Pencil Company. So, all right, let's get into it. Good morning. I'm drawing a Medusa. Um, before I got started, I had to rush to get um, everything kind of set up. I had a, a light bulb blow up on me uh, and one of my lamps that provides light for uh, these drawings. And so I had to clean it up. Um, an incredible thing. <laughs> so I had to clean that up and I installed some some new light bulbs into both lights um, so that they're both kind of cool cool fluorescents instead of uh, warmer incandescent. So I guess I need to go to Home Depot. All right. So for today, we're going to be uh, doing a portrait of a Medusa. And we're not going to make her terribly scary looking. We're going to actually be making her a little bit, I don't know how you can say this, uh, friendlier. <laughs> um, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to draw uh, a placeholder for the head. Okay. We're going to draw a circle kind of at the middle of our, of our page. And then we're going to uh, pull that down so it's more elliptical, like so, like an upside down egg. All right. So I'm using right now a dis a distant grip on my pencil, and I'm just creating some searching lines here to figure out the shape of my head. Yes, that's what that sound was. It was exploding uh, light bulb. Scariest thing I've experienced in in any recent time. All right. So we're going to do a vertical line here that is going to divide our face. We're gonna have our Medusa kind of looking down. We're doing kind of a three quarter view of, of our face of Medusa. We're gonna divide the face in half like so. So this is going to be where our center line, our vertical center line, this is gonna be our horizontal uh, center line. Okay, now that I have those, I'm gonna go through and kind of get rid of some of these marks. And here's the thing, I brought out the the kneaded eraser. Um, and I know so many of my students at Carmel High School who, who have these right now. Um, and I kind of shape mine into like a teardrop shape because um, that way I can do large areas of erasing and then I can do also little details. Okay, and this was actually shown to me by one of my old students at Carmel. Athena Peterson, who started doing this before I did, and I thought that was genius. So I'm actually using that same methodology, and this is just one kneaded eraser. It comes in packs. You know, I usually buy in boxes of, I believe, of twelve. So they come in little rectangles, and then I knead this up into like a teardrop shape, which is perfect. All right, so now we have, uh, now we have our. I'm gonna kind of lighten those searching lines a little bit. So now we have um, kind of a blueprint of where our head is going to go for our Medusa. Okay, so we're going to start with the left hand eye, or on for, for all intents and purposes, my right hand, the right hand side for me. But all right, so we're going to do in a kind of a drawn out ellipse here, maybe the top of the eye, bottom of the eye, about one eye's width apart here. I'm gonna put this one here. Okay. I'm gonna give some eyelids. 
to our Medusa. All right. And we're going to give her some big eyes here. We're, again, we're not going to show the entire shape of the eye. We're going to just draw kind of three quarters of the eye. Okay. Iris and pupil. Okay. For right now. Okay. Eyelid, eyelid. Tear duct, tear duct. All right. So right now we have our eyes, kind of a, a placeholder shape for our head. We're going to be, again, moving away from this. This is just to indicate proportions for us where things are going to go. We're going to add the things that kind of frame the face, the eyes, which are going to be the eyebrows. Okay. We're going to take this proportion here, transfer it down. Our nose is going to end right here. Do a generic shape coming down. Okay, so I'm kind of using an upturned nose. And just for those of you who are drawing along, I'm going to draw a circle here. I'm going to draw a circle here. Draw a circle, but see, the thing is you're only going to see a little bit of this side of that circle to indicate the nostril on the other side, okay? So that's going to be our two nostrils. All right, I go down a little bit further here. And indicate a little curve, upturning curve here. That's going to be the top of our lip, our upper lip. I'm gonna slide through, and I end here so that it aligns with the middle of the eye here. That's where that's going to end. All right, I'm gonna come this way and finish here. All right. And I'm just gonna finish up the top lip. I'm gonna taper on the ends here. And I'm gonna have it so that her mouth is open. I'm gonna give her some full lips. And we'll go back in and finish that. All right, now we're gonna go back up, draw our nose. We're going to come here, we're gonna cut in, and on the bottom of our circle that we created, we're gonna create the nostril on the bottom. Same thing over here. Okay. All right. Just like so. All right. Now. Now that we have kind of the basic proportions are in right now, figured everything out here. What we're going to do now is go through and add the detail to our eyes. Putting in the cast light for our pupils. Darkening shadows giving her some eyelashes just like so 
iris these lines that radiate out those are the little hairs that control amount of light that comes into your eyes and closes your pupil okay eyelashes coming from here you put pressure down and pull up okay What is everlasting hurt? I don't understand what you're saying. Um, someone made a comment. I don't know what everlasting hurt up a bit. What does that mean? Ah, don't worry, I'll get there. here darken these features give her some eyelashes on the bottom boom 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 we're gonna give her I'm gonna clean that up a little bit uh, like in the nostril So the top lip is going to be darker than our bottom lip, all right, due to the fact that this is tucking under and not getting hit by light versus the bottom lip, which is going out and getting hit by light. So we're going to darken this line as it tapers. Just like so. We're gonna give her a hint of teeth, not too much. Darken the values on the bottom of the bottom lip. We're going to leave a lot of reflective light on the top of the bottom lip. Just like so. Alright. So I got a lot of suggestions about what to draw today. This is again crowdsourced. But I decided to use some of the ideas I got for next week and not actually use them all specifically for today. All right. So now we have this weird kind of shape here. We're going to go through and kind of cut in, give her more of a pronounced brow, give her some cheekbones. Cut in tight here, and then give her a chin. Okay. All right. Now, here is our Medusa. So what we need to do now is add the thing that really makes her kind of distinctive, right? Which is 
What? Her hair. Her hair that is comprised primarily of snakes. Alright. So we're going to do that. So they finish up. the shading here. Okay. So we're going to use our kneaded eraser and kind of take away some of this information here. Grab another pencil. Now, let's give her lots and lots of volume with the snake hair. Let's play around with this. Let's get rid of that. I'll use the old pencil so I can get a lot of this volume. I'm gonna and we're going to definitely have to chunk. And you guys know what I'm talking about when it comes to chunking. Okay. Each one of these is going to be represent a singular snake. Right? So we'll start with some of our snakes' heads. Yeah? And so snake heads are, depending on the species, you know, and what type and how big, what I usually do is, it's kind of like make a pepper shape almost. Like that. Okay. I'm gonna put these kind of around around the, the perimeter of her face. I figure out where I'm going to put all this stuff. All right? And they're kind of fighting for her for her attention, you know? And maybe their mouths are open. And they're vying for her attention. Yeah, 
Right. So again, we're just we're following kind of like what folks have sent in as to what they think should be drawn today. Giving her a lot of volume. And I'll put in a couple of things here. Change the face of this one. I'm not liking it. It's a little, I'm a little passive. There we go. Better, better, better. That's better. That's what I'm talking about. There we go. Okay. So again, this is Mariana Diaz's idea. And I will be taking more suggestions again next week, but I have a lot so far. I have quite a few. So right now I'm just going through and kind of creating the plethora of snakes that there are all around. Hmm, this is going to be interesting with with the scales and stuff like that. When it comes to fitting it all in, it's going to be kind of problematic. But we'll get through it. Okay. Okay. So first things first, we're going to do some shadows over here. Piece of paper to prevent smudging. Using a distant grip 
and medium pressure right now. Shade. Mm. All right, starting to come together. Just cleaning up my lines, guys. There we go. So, I'm gonna do some detail work on the snakes that are closest to her. I'm not going to get too crazy. I'm using different varying pressure. And then I'm going to give him some shadow. So I want to kind of treat the snakes as if they are hair. So I'm gonna kind of chunk shading and things like that. Just as if this 
I'm treating these snakes like hair. So as you can see, I'm just I'm using the same methodology that I've shown you guys in the past of how to make hair. And I'm going to use not only this technique of chunking, but I'm going to use directional lines to also show movement and show volume. And value shading to kind of show changes too as well. Finish this guy up. Aggressive looking snake. Right 
Okay. Now. Huh. We're running out of time. <laughs> Always happens. We've got a lot going on motion-wise, direction-wise, and we're going to try and include all of it. I'm going to have to go through and shade a lot of this stuff, all this information here, which is fine. Get rid of some of these overlapping lines. There we go. Just going to clean it up a bit. Some of these lines are going to dive, others are going to move around. There we go. Some are going to get replaced. I've done Medusas in the past. The one I can think of in particular that I've done with students is uh, coffee drawing, coffee drawing project with with snakes, and that's a lot of fun. That's one I did in particular that I remember being very fond of. Kids liked. Kids reacted well to. It's always um a challenge to come up with projects that are going to teach kids certain concepts and at the same time challenge them and not be too academic, if that makes any sense. Uh, you don't want it to be boring. And that's always hard to do. It really is. Like, um, a lot of academic stuff that we teach as art teachers can be um, trite. Not really <laughs> fun to do all the time. So we try and mix it up as art teachers. We try and mix up our instruction so that kids aren't too bored. But it's, it's always a challenge. It's always a challenge. So, you know, I appreciate my students' patience with me sometimes when I'm, I'm asking to do a certain thing and they're just like, oh my God, it's so boring. But sometimes, you know, to, to get to the real meat of a lesson, you have to go through some really awful stuff too at the same time. just the nature of the beast. All right, now, I'm gonna put some of this other stuff into shadow, like this one snake, put him in shadow.
Medusa has always been kind of depicted as this ugly creature in narrative depictions, stories, etc. But the re the one of, I think I finally recall she was supposedly a very beautiful woman who was cursed. Greek mythology, hardcore stuff, man. So if you're join, just joining us again, you can always go to the YouTube channel, link in my bio. The link is in my bio, check it out. I know uh, for my students who follow, a lot of times they can't because they have other classes and that's fine. I don't penalize. This is an option for my students to participate. Just a fun thing for them to do while you guys are sheltering in place. During this crazy time, I had to go out yesterday, the first time in a while, and uh, went to the grocery store and to the pharmacy, etc. And I will tell you this, Whole Foods has it going on. They are doing a good job. I like their system. It's very organized. And it's probably the best time in the world to shop at Whole Foods. Um, just because you know, you're not overrun with people there. It's, it's pretty accessible now. Um, it's not as uh, crazy as it usually is. Kind of loving it. So I highly recommend if you need to go to the grocery store, go to Whole Foods. They have it going on. I've been learning my hashtag game. I'm not by any means an influencer or anything like that. I'm learning as I'm doing this and it's not, I don't know, I guess, am I, what's the focus of what I'm doing this, why I'm doing this, what's the intent behind it? Well, my initial intent is just to provide some A, entertainment for the students that I teach and access. Like, what teenager these days doesn't have an Instagram? I mean, there's not many. Okay, so this is a wonderful platform for me to reach out to my students, and former students. Um, you know, it's just a, it's a wonderful, wonderful uh, tool. And a huge distraction for me too as well. Because um, I get the to follow some amazing artists. You know, it's, you can, I follow more people that than follow me, for sure. And just because it's a really cool tool for seeing what other artists are doing, you know? I love that. And so, do I spend a lot of time on Instagram? Unfortunately, I do, but it's a wonderful tool. And for me to connect with other artists and commune with them in a way that I wouldn't necessarily have if I didn't use it, you know? Can it be overused? Absolutely. But I try not to spend too much time on it of course, my wife would probably disagree with you, or disagree with me, excuse me. But it's really fun to see what other artists are doing. So right now what I'm doing is 
kind of filling out direction wise, like different snake bodies. All right. So again, this is a, a suggestion by Mariana Diaz for me to, to do a Medusa in graphite, which I'm doing right now. And right now I'm just shading and using directional lines, directional lines to show kind of like the volume of the snakes. through here, shade up here. Okay. And now I'm using the same technique of chunking that I do in other hair drawings, but then I'm adding, as if these are solid things, I'm gonna be adding these directional lines. Again, directional lines, chunking. Okay. It's kind of looking like a tattoo design, oh my gosh. Yikes. Every once in a while, I get into that aesthetic too as well. So I'm adding a heavier base here, as if the coils are kind of coiling around her. And back up. Thank you very much for, for joining me. Don't want to smudge. Don't want to smudge. So all I'm doing right now is just kind of adding the hair, finishing things up here. Mm 
now. I'm going to do some direction lines. Basically give volume to the hair on the back side. Getting there. Now, for those of you who are working on this at home, you can spend as much or more time or less time on certain areas or spend more time on the snake's heads. That's fine, it's your drawing, not mine. I'm just showing you my technique. Doesn't mean that you have to follow everything that I do. And that's the thing is, as an art instructor, my job is to create opportunity for young artists to try out things, grow, make mistakes, and learn from them. My job isn't to show them the end all be all way. That's not my job. My job is to create opportunity for growth and I just show them certain techniques they can take with them. They can take them or leave them. It's up to them. Just like it's gonna be up to you. You can learn from what I'm doing and then expand from that. Like I have never kind of considered myself the fountain of everything and all. I'm just trying to show examples of what you can do with a simple medium of a pencil today. So again, all I'm doing is just creating value changes, darkening the values so that these the snakes that I do have will stand out a little bit. Clean this up a little bit so that they stand out and look scary. Right, okay. I got this next section to do and then we'll be done. So I'm gonna go quickly. That will be really dark in the back. Fill that in. Chunk, 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 chunk. Keep those highlights on the top. Darken, darken, and I don't know, I think we might be done with this one for today. Okay. And that is our Medusa for today. star thank you very much uh for joining me this whole week and for today's uh people's choice uh, medusa um 
I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Stay home. Stay safe. Have a wonderful rest of your day. I'll see you guys on Monday at 11 o'clock. Take care. Bye-bye.